my name is Jeff Cancer, and I'm superintendent of the Oxnard School District, and this is my uh, partner today. Muy buenos días. Yo soy Ana del Río Barba, que soy miembro de la mesa directiva del Distrito Escolar, y aquí conmigo está el superintendente, el señor Jeff Cancer. And what we're going to do is, uh, Ana and I are going to be talking at the same time, telling you a little bit about the purpose of this trip, and then we're going to get going in about 60 seconds. Y lo que vamos a hacer es que Jeff y yo vamos a compartir lo que vamos a hacer en esta gira y como en unos 60 segundos vamos a empezar. Ok, we're going to be visiting three schools today. Um, our, and you want to do it at the same time or after? Or? I can't do it at the same time. No? Ok. I'm not that good. I'm not that good. <laughs> yes, you are. But you're very better than that. We're going to uh, be visiting three schools today. Soria, Lemonwood, and Driffle. Hoy vamos a visitar a tres de nuestras escuelas, que es la escuela Juan Soria, Lemonwood y la escuela Driffle. And you're going to see three very different schools. The first school, Soria, is our newest school that was built three years ago and is a kindergarten through eighth grade school. Y en esta gira van a mirar la diferencia entre las escuelas. Juan Soria es la escuela más nueva y es una del kinder al octavo y van a ver la diferencia entre esta y la otra. The second school, Lemonwood, is a school on the south part of our district that is a large elementary school that needs some um, improvements, facilities improvements. La segunda escuela, que es la escuela Lemonwood, y está al sur de, de la ciudad, va a haber una diferencia y la necesidad que tiene esta escuela. Lemonwood is a school that has more portable classrooms than permanent classrooms. La escuela Lemonwood es una escuela que tiene más salones portátiles que permanentes. The third school you're going to visit is Driffle School, which is our uh, school that's currently under construction. La tercera escuela es la escuela Driffle, que ahorita mismo está bajo construcción. When we get to each of the schools, you're going to be met by the principal and a group of parents who are going to be your tour guides for today. Y cuando lleguemos a las escuelas, um, vamos a ser felicitados o invitados por las directoras y también por padres que son voluntarios. And we're going to entertain questions and then we're going to talk to you uh, uh, during the trip a little bit about our Measure R, which is on the November ballot, and explain that to you also. Y en ese entonces po podemos entretener uh, preguntas que tengan. Inclusive durante la gira vamos a hablar un poquito de la propuesta R, Así para que uh, darles más información sobre esta medida. And my job, I'm going to try to do the best job possible. Uh, we, we did a practice yesterday and I didn't do a very good job, but today I'm going to do a better job on keeping us on schedule. Y nuestro trabajo hoy es de tenernos al tiempo, ¿verdad? Porque ayer hicieron una práctica y no se hizo muy bien el trabajo, pero hoy sí vamos a, a lograr esa meta. Thomas. And our chauffeur for the day is, let him introduce himself to you. I'm oh, Danny. Danny, nice que to meet you. Es Danny. Que nos va a... And Danny's going to take good care of us today. I will. This bus goes a little top heavy, but I'll do my best to keep you comfortable. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about the no air conditioning. But... Everybody ready? Yeah. All right, great. ourselves. I apologize for my uh, uh, lack of proper hospitality. So maybe we can start with you guys over here. You can just kind of turn around and tell us who you are and who you're representing today. Hi, I'm Dwayne Osborne with Tri-Town Center. Hi, I'm Peggy Hatt. I'm publisher Tri-Town Can you hear me? Oh. I'm Peggy Hart, publisher, Tri-County Century Newspaper. I'm Wendy Leon from Ventura County Star. Mark Shen, K-A-D-Y TV. Hi, Patricia Raphael with CFW. My name's Ruby Hort, I'm a fellow for Twitter. Cody Gagin is the director of facilities for Lockstar School District. Victor Rosa from Viva Newspaper. Thank you, and I apologize for not doing that earlier. Uh, it gives me great pleasure. This 
Soria School, our first stop, and I'd like to introduce the principal of Soria School, Ana Dijana, and our board president is here, Veronica Rolda Solis. Thank you for and being here. Ana is going to uh, lead you around her school. Okay, do you want to get together for a group photo? Sure. Every child deserves a school like Soria, and that is what our intent is, every child. We have over 16,000 students, and they should all be in the school. Someone, the outside agency write up the measure, the ballot part? We work with a, a consultant, on and our board of trustees approved uh, going out for a general obligation bond, which is entitled Measure R, and that's on the November 6th ballot. And Measure R is a $90 million general obligation bond. Can you explain how that's paid back? Because I don't think people understand it. It's paid back over 30 years, and what it would do is, uh, per $100,000 valuation or property valuation, the homeowners pay $30 annually per $100,000 valuation, and that's paid back over 30 years. And lastly, what, what um, can you tell me what the worst part, or uh, like, like say the worst school is, what, you, what the blight is? Well, I. We have some of our schools that have been built 50 to 60 years ago, and they're definitely in need of improvement and modernization. They're old. On, on an everyday basis. If you come in the morning when the parents are dropping off kids, it's going to be very congested up here. Our school does not have a drop off or, or pick up place at all. So we really need one. In the afternoon, we are very congested in this area and also on San Mateo. 
to follow me, please. We're going to go to our main building. This is our office. And remember the office. Not only they want us to walk through, but I want to show you our so how many can this um, we have 72 computers at the moment and usually we have two classes in here because our class size is up to 30 so we have two classes what's the total number of students we have 890 students presently in our school the ceiling and notice the overall environment of those portables and compare it to, uh, I don't know if you went into Juan Sorry School, compare the color, compare the environment. Let's go. And our school was built back in 1981. The newer, the newer buildings were built back in 1981. And like I said, notice the whole environment. Tape it up. Some of those rooms have a, a very unpleasant aroma when you walk into them. The air conditioning in these rooms, the problem with it is has its blower. When you have the air conditioning actually on, it'll go on, it'll flick off, but the blower does not. The blower does not go, uh, turn off, and, and so consequently, we have a lot of noise in there during the whole time it's on. And these days we have have training students to participate in a, in a 5K run, and I have to run with the kids. It's very uneven. We need to work on a ground office. We're heading up to our small library. And it's the first thing you notice when we walk into the library. We don't have any computers for students to use as resources for research. We just have a report. Here we have a six grade class. We only have that for the As the teacher has it, he has some students who are working at the panel, you want others that you want to get up and search the books. There's no computers in here. Our, our library is not up to date. We need to have computers to make it accessible to our students. These sixth grade students, I'm sure, use them on a constant basis in order to prepare reports and research. And we're lacking those computers in here. This is 
triple spoon, you notice that it's under construction and we do not have a marquee here, which is a little different than Soria and Lemonwood. And let me do uh, introductions. I'd like to introduce the proud principal of uh, the school, Carol Fuller's Beck. Hi, nice to meet you all. Welcome to Dribble School. We're very excited to have you here. What we're most excited about is our new building. So we'll be showing you our campus, what it looks like today, and we hope what it looks like tomorrow. I'd like to introduce my assistant principal, Susan Maris. And she will be working, working with some of our parents and some of our reporters today. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Can we take a quick group sure. photo? Thank you. Okay, let's just know we coordinated the colors this morning. Because this is our school color. And burgundy. A little closer? Yeah. A little closer. All right. You know, our school was built during the 40s and 50s. I have an original picture um, that belonged to my dad. And uh, let me show you that these three little buildings right here were the original school from 1946. Those are the three buildings that we knocked down. And we want to continue to create history here. As you can see, our building, we have a lot of dry rot on our cafeteria. Unfortunately, this is a part that is not going to be restored due to lack of funds from our current bond dollars. So we're looking for more dollars to help us restore this. Um, this is our cafeteria. Currently our cafeteria holds 250 children. We have 180 first graders. So we run children through here every 25 minutes um, for lunch. Therefore we have six lunch periods. Normally we would have just four in a regular school, but because of the large size, we're a school of over a thousand, almost eleven hundred. So we run children through here every 25 minutes. We don't have air conditioning because we had to take the chillers out. Our chillers were removed because we were getting ready to um, remodel. Our children love coming to buy books, 
in the spring, or excuse me, in March for Dr. Seuss's birthday. We also have a second book, book fair, but it's more for uh, funny. We want to put two books in the household for kids, so it's one for one. Buy one, get one free. So we do that for Dr. Seuss's birthday. But this is the size of our library for a thousand children. Yeah. Last night we had over 1,200 people. We did great with our back to school night. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. For our staff and our students. All right, I'd like to, first of all, I want to have some introductions here. I'd like to introduce you to the uh, construction management team from EUR Consultant, Eloy, Hello. Tom, here. And Francisco, with the construction match team. Also, representatives from the uh, construction company of uh, Soltech and William and Kim. And also, representative from the architecture firm of the Woody and Woody is Steve. And just a, a little bit of background on the project it, consists, it will consist of 27 classrooms, a computer lab, a library, administration, chase structures, and support facilities. And the completion date is December 2013. Welcome to the construction site. In December of 2013. Okay, I'm going to turn point. Thank you. At first, we thought they were building a pool because it was one giant hole. But every day, we see the crane moving new rebar in. We see the gentleman working out here very, very hard. From sunrise, sunset, and we are almost ready to pour. If you stand further down here, you can see the true size of the school. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.
guys, on, on your way up, please, can you make sure that if you uh, if there are any plastic bottles, uh, you can bring them to me and I'll re I will recycle them for us so we make sure we leave the bus nice and clean. And I want to thank everybody for your time today. And if, there's, uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to give me a call. And uh, we appreciate all your efforts on our behalf.